What's up, YouTube? <laughs> no, I'm not dead. This is out helping his um. As you may have noticed from my channel name, much of the content of my channel, my streams, and my other channel, I kind of have a bit of a liking for King Cobra JFS, with even this video being one that I've already technically made over a year ago with King Cobra JFS, the true Grease Wizard. This video, like all of my videos, is flawed, but it is so clearly poorly made through poor research and even worse audio that I thought it was worth remaking this video in order to kind of make up for this. I thought this is required as King Cobra JFS is such an interesting person, however in the most boring way possible, so he really is someone that needs to be seen by people, as well as myself trying to give my own justification as to why I enjoy his content so much, despite it being well, lacklustre. However sadly, I am not the greatest authority on Cobra content, so I do have to give a slight warning with this video that you should take a lot of the information in this video with a heavy grain of salt, as many of you know from watching my streams on Curbs, I managed to get a lot of information incredibly, incredibly wrong, so I look like a right knobhead. Because of this, the purpose of this video is not really to specifically document everything about Cobra, and is more so instead supposed to show you some of the most interesting parts of the things about him and the situations and friends he has and has had in his life, showing us to why so many of us are so dedicated to watching King Cobra JFS. As I've said in the introduction, this will not be a full in-depth video about everything about who King Cobra JFS is, nor will this video be completely chronological. However, for this little part, instead of following what I'll actually do, I will say if you want to learn in detail about Cobra's early days, I won't actually do anything myself, I will instead direct you to my fifth channel, Bite Size Cobra Vids, which covers all of Cobra's life until the creation of his very first YouTube channel, Gothic King Cobra 52. But first, let me briefly talk about who Cobes actually is. Josh Saunders is a sexy gothic bad boy wizard. He can play the guitar, as he is also a gothic rock star. As you may have been able to tell, the gothic subculture is quite important to who he is, which shows in his dress sense despite not really fitting in to how most other people do it, although not too many people are actually goth anymore, so I guess he's keeping it alive as best he can, Tubes. Something else that is quite important to Cobes is autism, which he has been diagnosed with and is something he is fully aware of, which specifically limits his social ability, which he hates as it has made things quite difficult and has led to many funny situations in his life which we'll see soon. This is not a particularly accurate description of Cobes, as there is far too much for me to describe him well, as in my opinion Josh is someone that needs to be seen to be believed, so this is kind of what I'd like to do for you in this video. Well, as best as possible I guess. The first videos uploaded onto this Gothic King Cobra 52 channel consisted of videos made from within his father Clint's basement, and a stark contrast to the videos made today, with Cobra speaking notably faster, and just saying that, is an understatement. It is kind of amazing how much faster he speaks, which I assume is due to the volume of energy drinks he consumed at this time. There are only a couple good videos, at least in my opinion, with the highlights of this time being the Pez video and the Troll video. The Pez video is a pretty good example of Cobra's hyperactivity, and is pretty self-explanatory with its premise. Cobra appears on camera, shirtless for some reason, and as you can likely guess, begins eating the Pez sweets however he was eating a lot of them. Instead of actually swallowing many of them, he instead began letting them fall out of his mouth onto the floor, which would actually be a sign of things to come. So look at that. So now, he's wasted a bunch of pears. 
trying to load the post dispenser. Okay, like this it's like okay. These are pain in the ass to open. And it's a bigger pain in the ass to put them in the fucking dispenser. Just eat the fuckers. It saves time. You still get your sugar. You still get your sugar. You still get your sugar, 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 sugar. Look, I can maybe it's a Pez dispenser too. Oh. 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 Pez dispenser! Oh, oh, Pez all over myself. <laughs> Peach Monster 666 is a troll who decided to troll our friend Cobes, belittling his character and his videos. Greetings, YouTube. Peach Monster 666 is back from beyond the grave. Here to troll you, Gothic King Cobra. Yes, <laughs> your videos are so pathetic. Ah, and so much trolling begins. Now I've heard legends of the way you deal with your supposed trolls, Gothic King Cobra, and you say, "Oh, trolls don't bother me." They obviously do. Otherwise, you wouldn't say shit like "fuck off, trolls." <laughs> I also heard that you're supposedly a excellent guitar player. Well, I beg to differ. I don't play guitar. Guitar is for pussies. <laughs> Real men play with their fingers like this. <laughs> As the most astute of you may have realised, Peachmaster666 is actually King Cobra JFS in a genius disguise. Yeah. As to why he did this, I have no idea, but it is kind of impressive how obvious Cobes is, despite this disguise and dark lights. The basement saga was not too long lasting, as in 2012, Cobes went to Job Corps, a system for giving people vocational training where he would have a few adventures, most notably having a girlfriend, Stephanie, whom he would have intercourse with in the toilets where he would record it, as well as getting kicked out of Job Corps for smoking marijuana. However, the funniest thing involved a story told by Cobra about a little bit of fun he had with the first relationship he had in Job Corps, a grapefruit. A while back at Job Corps, I started serving grapefruits. I'm like, oh, grapefruit, never had that before. And I actually liked it, you know, like eating grapefruit with sugar and all that. And normally, you know, after so many years of rejection, it's like, okay, I gotta quit caring about love and sex and all that because it's never gonna happen. Well, it actually did happen, but it's before I met Stephanie. Um, on the one time chance that I did actually care, um, I had a grapefruit for a, before I went to bed. And, and the thought occurred to me, can I make this into a vagina? Hmm. So I ate all the grapefruit out, I poked a hole in the middle of it, and then stuck it on my dick, wrapped around, and jerked off with it. Wet, cold, and slimy. About like fucking a dead chick. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I wouldn't know. But um, my roommate's are like, what are you doing? And I'm like, look, I had sex with a grapefruit. He's like, what? Fucking Saunders, man. I'm like, okay, look, I won't do it again. It's just too well. It's all, it's all good, dude. I'm like, okay, cool. So I threw it away. And then somehow the whole campus found out, found out about it. Because I saw Job Corps. It's kind of like high school in that aspect. So... And at first, I'm like, this kind of pisses me off. You know, people give me shit about it. So instead, I decided to make jokes about it. Like, mmm, good aim for this. Sounds so good and juicy. You know, just random shit like that. And people are like, oh, this guy, you know, it's funny as hell, you know. I started doing my dances and shit and randomly in the sack when they're playing shitty music I don't like, you know. And it's shit like that that 
you know, people are like, hey, Saunders is fucking crazy. He's funny as hell. Oh, yeah, nothing's going to get to him now. So, fucking great fruit. <laughs> the crazy life of Gothic King Cobra. <laughs> I don't want to breeze past Stephanie, as she is a huge part of Cobra lore, considering she was Cobra's first girlfriend. And as you may know, relationships, well, more specifically sex, is a very big thing for Cobra. Stephanie, as you'll find out later, is by far the greatest woman Josh has managed to go out with, and was a big part about some of the greatest videos in the early days of King Cobra JFS's first apartment. This includes Cobes treating Stephanie right with some hot pockets which you can see she's really enjoying, especially due to the camera being pointed at her while she's doing something as exhilarating as eating a hot pocket, as you can see by the smile on her face. There was also another time where she was featured heavily in a video, where you can see the pride in Josh's face, and she is clearly loving it too. However, don't look at Cobra's groin area at this point, wink wink. Sadly, this brilliant relationship would not last forever, which both of them would be at quite a lot of fault for, although Coves' part in it is of course quite a bit stupider than Stephanie's. This relationship was for the most part a long distance one, which is pretty hard for normal people to maintain, let alone King Cobra JFS, so this likely led to both of them cheating. Coves cheated on Stephanie first, doing it in the back of a van with a pregnant woman due to cigarettes, which is of course very classy. Stephanie would later cheat on Coves, this time rectally. Cobes would try to shed some light on this with a very truthful statement stating that she did this as Cobes was quote, too big for her, which is a likely story. After the two of them had broke up, Stephanie would tell her quote, side if the story, where she would discuss the breakup situation as well as talking about the supposed bad things that Cobra had said he would do to her. When he cheated on me, he told me like, months later, I had more respect for him and told him the next day. I know the part of it was he kind of threatened a friend that it happened with, but he also kind of threatened me in a way. I get he was trying to be joking and, uh, you know, kinky or whatever, but at the same time, I when he said that, I wasn't sure if I should take it as a joke or take it seriously. And I took it seriously and I left. He talks massive shit on me and more of his videos than I have ever talked about him. Like the whole he made me a nympho thing is not true. I've pretty much always been one. I've just been more reserved about it until now. Speaking of fuck off. And as far as if he knows anything about me, he has not talked to me in years. I mean that. So he knows nothing about me. He wants to get a f the information from everyone else instead of straight at the horse's mouth. To this day, this is likely the most influential relationship Coves has ever had, and is someone who he likes to think about often, as he misses her terribly, he really does. Anyway, I called Stephanie, and it was good to hear from her again, it really was. I try to act all macho, but I'm not going to miss her, but the truth is, I miss her terribly, I really do. But it was good hearing from her again, it really was. The thing of it is, man, I miss her terribly, I really do, and I'm wishing I hadn't broke up with her, I wish I could be with her right now, I wish I could hold her again. And with Stephanie, I care about her a lot, I really do. I have feelings for her, I really do. I, I miss her terribly. I've been really angry these past couple of days, I think it's because I miss Stephanie, and I... I miss her terribly, I really do. All I do know right now at the moment is I miss her terribly and I wish I hadn't broken up with her. However, we've skipped over a lot, as you may have noticed, with Cobes now having his own apartment. An apartment he paid for with his job at Wendy's. This, at least in my opinion, is the iconic Cobra apartment, with him living in this place for roughly eight years. In the early days of this apartment, Cobra would actually live in this place with someone, Couch Guy Chris. Couch Guy Chris, as you may be able to tell by the name given to him by trolls, was someone that used to live with Cobra for a short amount of time on Josh's couch. Chris was not the greatest person to live with, considering he didn't really help with anything in the residence, essentially just mooching off Josh, not helping him clean up, and would actually annoy Josh through playing video games really loud, whilst Josh would create videos as well as continuously correct him, which would be one of the biggest irritations to Josh and likely one of the bigger reasons as to why Chris had to leave. So my meat, my vegetable, and the peanut butter itself has lots of protein in it. So, that was a pretty good meal, and a lot healthier than, yeah, because tomato, banana pepper, the hamburgers, just raw meats, you know, 
bread's got the wheats, the yogurt's got a bit of protein and the bread's, you know, vegetable. So this had a little bit of everything in it, minus um, the fish, which should be in the dairy, actually. So yeah, so this this pretty much... Can, the fish the, goes in protein. It's meat. Chris, do you have to correct me every fucking video I make? Why the fuck would you think that fish is a dairy product? Does it come out of a cow? It contains protein like milk. Milk's a dairy product. Milk, cheese, all that is dairy. Peanuts go into uh, proteins which are meat. Maybe it was a slip of the tongue. It happens. Okay, stop correcting me every fucking video. I'm getting sick and tired of it. Anyway. Now this isn't to say that Chris is the worst person ever. They were friends before this whole situation, with Chris allowing Cobes to upload videos at his dad's house, as well as having a lot of fun with Cobes. Dude, he's like one lordy when I was 12. Hey guys, this is Chris Moore. Yo, wait, this baby, is my brother, brother Josh. Oh, shit. Oh. He's the one gonna help me make the videos. Or certain videos. Check out his channel. Warlord seven seven one. He's got a couple good cool videos. Shut up. He's a little drunk. There's a lot more to say about Chris, such as him loaning Cobra his van, yes the very same van that Cobra had sex with the pregnant woman in, as he didn't have a shirt so he couldn't get any butter and pay rent, but that's not just funny. This led to Cobes trying to drive the van where he got instantly pulled over and given a ticket. However, the end for Couch Guy Chris essentially came when Cobes reached his breaking point and sat Chris down and began reading some comments directed at Chris basically calling him a mooch and a bomb. That's the only way to get rid of the plague. Or, yeah. It's... And you know why they got the plague? Because they didn't shower or bathe. Dude, I shower every day. When was the last time you showered? Yesterday. Okay. Chris should do day labor. He looks like he can do it. Then you go what? Day labor. What the hell is day labor? Working a job. I've done it. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. One person who was vehemently against Chris was Josh's dad, aka Home Dad Clint. As Cobra's dad, Clint was very aware of Chris being a mooch and was very eager to get rid of him. But now I'm going to ditch the chronology as after this point doing a timeline is kind of pointless as Cobra is very very boring. So me just trying to ramble along would just be awful and nobody would want that. So let's ditch this and instead talk about Clint for a little bit. As he is Cobra's father he cares about Cobra quite a bit which absolutely makes sense which has led to him becoming personally involved within the Cobraverse in the best possible way he could going on to the King Cobra GFS Reddit page and making numerous posts attempting to defend his son. The final post of his is the most notorious, and I'll only read some of it as it's very long. I came to this page because someone informed me that the entire page was dedicated towards hurting my son. As such, I started out by attacking before I read anything. For that, I apologise. I realise that many of the people here are good people and have tried to support and help Josh. For those of you who do actually spend all of your time trying to fuck with him, like the guy who got him fired from Wendy's, you need to get for your lives. 
I am aware of who my son is, what he is and what he does. It is not easy to be a parent of a child like Josh, but it's even harder to have it spread all over social media and have to see it all the time. My wife and I consider it a huge success that he isn't on the streets or institutionalised. He is an adult now who lives on his own, and we can't control his life. Am I proud of everything Josh does? Of course not. Would I change some of his personal behaviours if I could? Absolutely. Have I tried to change his personal hygiene every day of his life since junior high? Yes. Have I tried to help with the tobacco and alcohol abuse? Constantly. Am I ever going to change him? No. Clint is seen by the pictures I'm showing now, as well as through the rest of the posts as you can see, is a little bit of a weird guy, and it's not really surprising that he's such a big part of the Cobraverse. Clint is mainly seen in the Cobraverse as a negative figure, seen as not doing enough to help his own son with his various problems and being partly at fault for what he's become. However, that's up for you to decide on your own. I've covered a few notable figures in the Cobraverse already, so let me go through the ones I think are the most interesting before I go on to some of the best videos that Cobra has made, as well as some of the greatest sagas that have occurred during 10 years of Cobra being on YouTube. So let's start off this little section with perhaps my favourite of all of Josh's homeboys, Homeboy Scotty. I'll say that Scotty is probably the most iconic of all of Cobra's friends, and probably the closest that he would ever actually consider to be one of his proper friends. Well, more likely used to at this point. I have actually done a whole video on Homeboy Scotty, which will give you a bit more of an in-depth look for you if you'd like, so I'll only make this part brief. Although, he'll pop up occasionally throughout the video. Probably the best individual moment of Scotty's, well, in my opinion, is during one of the Cobra food reviews, where he tries to review a Subway sandwich with Scotty. However, Scotty's girlfriend Tina arrived and started to quote, start shit, as Scotty allegedly wouldn't see his daughter. Tina doing this angered Cobes and made him praise single life. Hanging out with homeboy Scotty, about to do a food review for Subway. Dick butt. The only thing I, did, I do not agree with about Subway is that Jared motherfucker. Cure base. <laughs> really? You gotta say that when I'm about to eat delicious Subway, dude. <laughs> I had to say it. I'm sorry. I'm fucking... Fucking Scotty, dude. Here's the thing, though. Subway does... Dude, I I'm gonna have to address this. I've tried, Tina. Please stop. Please stop. I have tried to see you. I have tried. You're making me out to look like the bad guy. Like, always. That's cool. I'm fucking sick of it. Please stop. Hey, Tina, if you and Scott, don't drag you and Scott's bullshit onto my Facebook, please, and thank you. For real, I've been trying. You can make me look out to be the bad guy. Blast me. Cool. Whatever. I have been trying. You're the one that doesn't want me there. It's cool beans. Whatever. Make me out to look like the bad guy. I'm cool with that. I've been cool with that. Anyways, back to filming Facebook Live and doing a food review for YouTube at the same time. Okay, Tina, you could say I haven't been, but I have messages on my phone saying otherwise. But oh, my right. God. Tina, if you come say hi to me, that's cool, but I'm not going to have you fighting with Scott on my fucking Facebook. I'm just not doing this, all right? I'm trying to do a fucking food review for YouTube. I'm sorry, Tina, but damn it. I'm sorry, Josh. I didn't want to get that, but she was going to stop, dude. And she still isn't going to stop. You know, of course she's not going to stop. So just ignore Tina right now, dude. I'm a like, fucking bad man, bro. Oh, dude. You don't. I told you to ignore it, stop. And people have to fucking bring drama onto my Facebook. I'm tired of it. Stop, Tina. Just fucking stop, please. You and Scott can talk about this on your own fucking time. Please stop fucking bringing drama into my fucking Facebook. I'm tired of it. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Anyways, Tubes, I'll catch you all on the flip side. I'm going to continue Facebook live in just a bit longer. Hey, Scott, I have your daughter. You want to see her? Oh, my fucking yeah. God. Yeah. It's time to 
be responsible. Oh my God, God Tina, Tina, stop. Can you please stop? Yes. <sighs> oh my God. She's looking like a fucking bad person. Yeah, because I'm not. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. I, work my and no I know you do, me. and believe me, if Scotty could get a job, he would, but he's legally blind, so nobody will fucking hire him. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Single life. I love single life Facebook! Another great moment is the fair video, where we would get to see Scotty's iconic crack walk, as well as Josh lamenting about his relationship status. I know when I said it, I'm thinking about giving up on dating. I'm not sure if I will or not. I'm still trying to decide. You never know, man. You just gotta, you gotta be open minded. Oh, I've been trying to be open-minded to you, but every time it happens, nothing happens. Every time I try, nothing happens, and it's starting to piss me off a little I, I bit. I know, dude. I hear you. I'm sorry, homie. That's not your fault, dude. I tried, dude. You know I tried. I, yeah, I know you're trying, dude, but fucking, you know, it, I shit happens. People, man. I, like I know you can. I know I you can. Like, Look at me. I'm a disgusting, ugly fuck. Dude, I'm worthless. Dogging on you. I dog on myself all the time. I don't give a shit. Well, it's nothing against you, man. That's just my confidence. What? Look at Rick Ross. Who? Rick Ross. Who the hell is Rick Ross? It doesn't matter who he is. He's a fucking ugly, fat fucker. And he gets laid all the time. Yeah, well, that's Rick Ross for you. Something that is probably quite important, or maybe not, I don't know, is the now dead meme of Rest in Peace Homeboy Scotty which came around from one of Josh's videos where Josh talked about the death of Scotty Moore, a guitarist. Of course, Trolls immediately jumped onto this and pretended Scotty had passed away, and thus, rest in peace, homeboy Scotty. And on that case, rest in peace to talk about homeboy Scotty. Well, at least for now. Scrapper Steve is someone who I'll talk more about later in regards to a certain saga, however, I'll just give a little bit of a quick introduction as to who Scrapper Steve is, although spoiler alert, Steve isn't really around in the Caribiverse anymore. Anyway, probably the most notable thing about Steve is that he is a furry, which is not a joke, and has apparently got some weird videos on his hard drive, with Scotty allegedly seeing these and calling him a goat fucker. Steve is probably the most bewildering person in the whole Caribiverse, being well, just a plain old fucking creep, although despite this he has managed to get a fiance in the past, which is shown in the following video where Cobes and Steve had a rocking good time. Not in a relationship though, by the way. Just gotta put that out there. Pizza party, woo woo. Right. For both of us here, we are not, we are not seeing each other in a relationship. We are just friends. Yeah. Steve's already got someone. <laughs> well, Steve's fiance is pregnant and she can't really have spicy food, so. You could, you could tell which one has pepper flakes on it. Mm. Hell yeah, man. That's a good pizza. <sighs> oh, Alright. Mm. And look at that right there. Yeah. That my... Yeah. You get a close-up on the, uh... On the pizza there, yeah. <laughs> Some stuffed crust right there, you see the cheese? Oh yeah. It's a rockin' good time. That be. One of the well, in my opinion, more lackluster of Josh's homeboys is Darth Flinny B, who is actually one of Josh's better friends, actually wanting to spend time with him rather than just taking advantage or just messing with him. My favourite part about Darth is the fact that he's basically a real life dwarf from fantasy, with him being short, stocky, having a beard, and even smelting metal, which is really absurd, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is up, you two? How you doing? How you doing? But what the fuck are you wearing? I am wearing the People Suck I Need a Beer t-shirt. It's my newest t-shirt from Teespring and it kicks ass. It's so shiny. From the Crucible, I'm made of me. 
Yes. That shit out. Here's a uh, one he made. Light Chihuahua, that's hot. Bro, that's no hot. My bad. You good? I yeah. got some more. That one's cool. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. But no, I didn't break it. We're good. One of his best moments is actually one that is independent of Josh, with him giving 158 boxes of Girl Scout cookies to the police, supposedly as a way to stop the hate. Which I'm sure is the best way for a grown man to go about the situation, but it's clearly a strange situation for the police officers, which I'm sure is clear to see. What the fuck is up YouTube, it's your boy Darth Lenny here back at you with another video. Today, well let's just say I bought a some Girl Scout cookies and had a couple left over. So, here is where we are. But there is something we are forgetting. So, we are given these extra 158 boxes to Casper PD. Thank you, Mike. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. 148 of Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And thank you guys for your service. Thank you. And enjoy. However, probably his most notable appearance is in the live stream titled Budweiser Challenge, where the two of them attempt to drink 26 beers together, although they brutally fail and end up passing out and just generally being goofballs. Look at that, baby. 26 pack of Budweiser. Yeah, yeah. Budweiser. Well known for the Clydesdale horses. This is why this age restricted has been in place. Now, we each get 13 beers. That's 26. Right there. 13 plus 13. Yeah, buddy. You don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know what's going to happen. You don't even know. <laughs> I like beer because it is good. Mm -hmm. I drink beer because I should. If there was a song to sing, I'd sing it and beer you bring. They say beer would make me dumb. It are go good with pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah, buddy, that's tasty. Not trying to gl not trying to glamorize tobacco and alcohol, but must be twenty one or older. Yeah, I like how being a goth cowboy triggers people. It's just. Really gets them going. They gotta make their shitty comments. <laughs> yeah, when I get a goth girlfriend of my own, y'all are gonna be eating your words. I'm gonna be like, see, told you. See what happens when you wait patiently in the dating scene. It pays off. Speaking of eating, <laughs> wish we could just cut Chester loose from the noose, but it is what it is. Fuck suicide. Life's one hell of a ride, we're all slowly dying, every day we're trying. I will donate $20 if you can drink two beers in five minutes. Thank you, Will D, for the $2 donation. I probably couldn't do that, because that'd be nuts. Can Darth play drums? If you count this as a drum. <laughs> Playing the skins. <laughs> 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 Does Darth drive? Do I drive? Yes. Do I drive when I'm drinking? Typically not. Right. Help me drink this fucking 26 pack. God damn, Mrs. Darth is going to be fucking pissed. Yeah, she is. But this epic live stream will be worth it, dude. Yeah. <coughs> Finally, for this brief mini section, I'll talk about the least well liked of the homeboys, with Josh himself likely even sharing this opinion, with this homeboy being Warlord Alex Campbell. Probably Warlow's biggest known traits in the Cobraverse is being a mooch, as well as being a complete liar. A funnier trait of his, however, is his liberal sexual activities, with him being very, very open. And with this case, this does actually include his asshole, 
with the meme smooth muscle control being used with this context in regards to Alex. This sexual liberty and bisexuality made its way into Alex making some pornographic content. Trolls eventually found this and of course, being good supporters of Josh, decided to relate this to him in some way, deciding to send him some fan gifts with a screen cap of one of these videos being present on a t-shirt for Josh to appreciate, which has given us probably my favourite Cobra quote. The title of this stream is Unboxing. What are we unboxing? This package here that was sent to me in the mail. It's a white shirt. Check this out. Hmm. Oh, huh, cool. What the fuck is this nasty shit? Who the fuck's... Oh, dude, that's disgusting. No, dude, no. I'm throwing this shirt away. That's fucking nasty. Fucking nasty, dude. Fucking disgusting. You fucking disgusting motherfuckers. I don't want to fucking see that shit. Send me a picture of my fucking friend's dick on it. You fucking disgusting. Like, grow the fuck up. Who the fuck sent that, man? I'm gonna charge him with sexual harassment. Hold on a second. Let's see, is there, a, is there a return address? I'm not gonna overreact because obviously it was sent by a troll. That's what they want. They want me to. They want me to. We overreact. There is more to say about Warlord, but because of Matisse, this is again stuff that will have to wait until later. Let's now move away from Cobra's homeboys and back to focusing on him. It is the Cobraverse after all. One of the biggest things you may have noticed if you are only a very occasional watcher of Cobes is that he is a very lustful person, with his years long dry spell being something that is a huge thorn in his side and is something that he wishes to change. This is not a recent trait of Cobes, although you can tell that by the fact that I said years long, but what I meant is that Cobra has had these issues essentially throughout his YouTube career. Stephanie of course being his first girlfriend and being a big part of the early period of the Cobraverse mostly stopped that, excluding the van incident, but never mind that. However, when they broke up, Cobra didn't really have any solutions to these problems, making him let's say, lonely. The fans, yet again, would soon come to Cobra's aid, sending Cobes a fleshlight, which Cobra would call a pocket pussy, to help him with, at this point, one year dry spell. Cobes did not appreciate this gift well, well, on camera, anyway. He used it instantly, but then decided to teach it a lesson by destroying it with a pair of scissors on camera. I don't find a need for sexual encounters and companionship. I've just decided to basically give up on love and companionship and sex. Like, I have no need for it. And to be quite frank, I kind of hate sex, actually. To be quite honest, just the other day, when I got this pentagram t-shirt, this thing came with it. And I'm like, what in the actual fuck is this? Oh, there's a lid. You unscrew it. And it's... Oh, look! I think one of my fans might have sent me a pocket pussy. Ha! Ha! I'm going to destroy this pocket pussy on camera. And not with my dick, either. Okay, I appreciate the thought that someone out there cared enough to send this to me. But when I have no sex drive, you can't expect me to fuck this thing. Like, 
someone made a comment on one of my YouTube videos. They're like, somebody send this guy a pocket pussy, and I deleted the comment because I'm like, no! Don't fucking send me a pocket pussy, god damn it. I find sex to be disgusting. Like, what the fuck? This is what I think of your stupid pocket pussy right here. This is what I think about love and companionship. This is me, like, saying I give up on love and companionship, man. It's never gonna fucking happen, so why fucking waste my time craving it? Fucking send me a pocket pussy because you feel sorry for me? You think that I actually care about sex and shit? In a great act of kindness, the same troll that sent the pocket pussy decided to up the ante by sending Cobes a full-fledged sex doll, which was soon dubbed Queen Cobra. However, it seems like this doll went the exact same way as the pocket pussy, being used once and then destroyed in a fit of rage, although he didn't actually record himself doing it this time and instead tried to lie about it, which he then clearly revealed and then showed himself holding the sex doll's torn face up in a video stating that he broke it with his huge penis. Something <clears throat> dedicated Cobra followers know not to be true. The final and probably most notable of these sexual apparatuses is the one called Fun Size Felicia, named due to the very unfortunate size of the doll. However, with Cobra receiving this doll, we received yet another great video, this time featuring Sean, Cobra's iconic doll. What's a vagina's favourite soda? I don't know, Felicia. What is a vagina's favorite soda? Squirt. <laughs> Ladies. Oh my god. You think that's funny, babe? I'm not your babe just yet. You gotta take me out on a date first. Oh, I will. I'll show you a real good time. Give me a kiss. What? <sighs> Fine. Yeah. Uh-huh, Sean getting some. Oh look, Felicia, I know Sean's an ass, but you know, I think if you give him a chance. Give him a chance. Oh. But Josh, what Felicia? I'm fun sized. Don't you want to spend time with me? How the hell is he supposed to do that? You know, don't you want to cuddle with me? Hold on a second. What? Before she goes, what do you... Yeah! 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 What the hell was that? Oh, you know. What? I gotta do it again. Do what? I'm gonna spank her ass. What? In a twist that you won't expect, the sex doll was also seemingly killed at the hand of Cobra, but I guess it is what it is, Tubes. However, Cobra's romantic endeavours haven't purely been with own Stephanie and inanimate objects. One other woman he's definitely gone out with is a woman by the name of Summer. In the nicest way possible, Summer is definitely more of a fit for Cobra than Stephanie ever was, although it isn't really too much of a problem as Summer is a very handsome woman, but definitely not in the way of Justin Bieber, they absolutely do not look alike. This saga was very crazy, having both Scrapper Steve and Homeboy Scotty involved, where Scotty would basically start shit between the three of them as both Steve and Summer were into the whole furry thing. Upon the idea of Steve and Summer creating a fursuit business and a chat, at some point the term let sparks fly was used by Steve, which led to Scotty beginning a Facebook Live calling Steve out, and as I showed before, calling him a code fucker. Get, get, invite everybody that knows Josh, because this is some serious shit, dude. Like, I, I, I'm not over exaggerating, this is some furrow fucking shit. You don't try to lie to me. Fucking All right, Steve since, since to, yeah, Steve hold, tried to hold, lie hold, to me. Hold, hold on, let me say it. Let me say it. All right, what happened was, you know, Josh just found a girlie, right? Yeah. And that's awesome. It's fucking badass. I'm happy for Josh, and she's a good woman, and he deserves her. All right, he 
he this he doesn't deserve the bullshit what's coming from all right you want to know the bullshit y'all want to know the bullshit the bullshit is Josh all right being a good friend never been a bad friend never once anytime I fucking needed him or anytime any of his fucking friends needed him he was there all right he was always fucking there okay with that being said with that being said Steve Mr. Goat whatever you fucking want to call him goat fucker whatever all right this is what happened try to get me like Try to fuck Josh's girl, dude. Straight up. Steve was trying to get with my girlfriend. Trying his fucking damnedest, dude. Everything in his fucking power. What a real fucking friend. And I hope to God he watches this, dude. Yeah, I fucking lied to him about getting him work. I just wanted to, for him to hear what the fuck he was saying behind his fucking back. What a real... Yeah, dude. Like, you know how bad that hurts me? Like, Josh... Josh has bought that man so much shit. Given him so many things. And what a real fucking friend. Fucking hold this, Josh. You know hold what? this. Hold this. What a real fucking friend. You know, the thing of it is, I helped Steve move into his old apartment. I helped Steve move out of his old apartment. And then I helped Steve move into his new apartment. I've helped Steve move in and out of his old apartment and into his new apartment. Okay? Well, how much how much cigarettes have you given that man? How much money for gas have you given that man? How much fucking food have you shared with that dude? How much shit have you done for that guy, okay? Like, that's what I'm saying, Brody. Yeah. That's not okay, dude. And then Steve tried calling me back. He's like, I got something to say. I don't know what people are saying, blah, blah, blah. He tried denying it, dude, when he called me back just a second ago. And I strapped told him, like, dude, I was here. Okay, I heard what Scotty said. Okay, guys, to fill you in, I kind of lied. I did. I was like, hey, jo uh, hey, Steve, I got this job. We can make 150 bucks, blah, 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 right? Yeah, I know that was wrong, but what was wrong, what was really wrong is what the fucker was trying to do to Josh, dude. Like, I know I didn't do right, but I did it in disguise for the good reason, okay? Like, I know it wasn't okay, but fuck him. Steve tried to fuck Josh's girl, that's what he did, dude. He was trying to get down her pants and shit. Isn't that fucked yeah. up, guys? Like, yeah, what a friend, dude. What what a fucking friend, homie. Like, like, legitly, who would fucking do that? Like, what the fuck, man? I don't have messenger. Some of the more iconic things that occurred during the saga was it being revealed that Summer had used her mouth to pleasure Josh, and as you may have noticed, he doesn't exactly look too clean, and thus definitely not his nether regions, as Summer managed to contract a throat infection. Summer was also involved in the creation of Josh's iconic Aussie knuckles, which were tattooed in the wrong place by Summer herself, as she was an aspiring tattoo artist. However, this wasn't done too well, so it soon faded, and he had to get it properly done at a tattoo parlour. The final thing I'll mention about Summer is one of the final things to happen during her saga, which occurred. The final thing I'll mention about Summer is one of the final things to happen during her saga, which occurred around Christmas. Summer, being extremely thoughtful, managed to get Cobra an autographed picture by Ozzy. In return, Josh gave her a used Pikachu blanket that he bought off of Scotty for $50, stating that he'd wash it. Unsurprisingly, not long after, the two broke up and Scotty's blanket was returned to him. The sex dolls weren't the only situation where trolls had attempted to soothe Cobra's dry spell, with them involving a smaller YouTuber by the name of Gothic D. Cobes gave D a shout out, with this clearly being driven by attraction, which led to the trolls going onto Josh's channel, stating that the two of them were dating. Gothic D did not take this too lightly, as well, why would you? She would soon upload a video talking about how she does not go out with Josh and struck Josh where it hurts the most, stating that he is not goth. Right, so you can't see me because I got no makeup on and I can't be asked to put it on and I'm kind of pissed off so that's why if I tried to put my makeup on it probably looks shit. So this is the fourth time King Cobra channel subscribers have commented on my YouTube shit saying, saying probably me and Cobra are dating. We are not dating because A, I'm crushing on someone and B, I do not like him that way and C, I don't go out with posers. Okay, so why don't you stop saying that? Um, we are cute cup and blah 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 because I'm just gonna block you off my channel and so be it All right, so just leave me alone and fuck off and get a new fucking girl or or, or probably Stalk them like like you're trying to do to me with your 
sending your fucking fans onto my channel because I'm just gonna block them and then I'm gonna block you as well because I, I do not want to see you. I did. I wish I could take back saying hi to you. That's what I can do. I wish I can take back saying hi to you because now you're literally pissing me off. And to be honest, I'm not the kind of girl you want to piss off. To be honest, because I do not do shit. I do not stand for shit that people keep lying about. So. So I don't care if this hits you because you're nothing but a creep and I've heard loads of things about you apparently that you think that your disability which is Asperger's apparently you got it and apparently that made you go goth because no one will accept you when a disability does not tell tell or change someone to go goth or, or to change their appearance. The disability does not do that. You do that yourself and to be honest you are not goth. You're just an emo metal kind of thing kind of abomination of it you're not a goth and the bands that you that you have said in your videos that my friends have have, have seen before the bands that you mentioned in your videos are not goth they're just they're just, just they're just fucking rock mainstream bands so do me a favor and i'm gonna put this as politely as i can fuck off and leave me alone Alright? Because A, I will not go out with you if you were the last person on this fucking earth, okay? This became a bit of a back and forth between the two of them, although this was mainly fueled by the trolls, with at even one point Josh being sent a troll video of D making a, another response to Josh. Hey Josh, have you seen that bullshit video someone made about you of D roasting you? Uh, no, I haven't seen it. Okay. So haters be making videos about me on YouTube trying to make fun of me. Watch me watch this with a straight face. What is this? Gothic D response to trolls in King Cobra translated and wow. That was kind of sexy. Hell yeah. Thanks, Gothic D. You know what? I want to give her a shout out on YouTube because that was a pretty sexy fart. Gothic D response to Trolls in King Cobra translated and plus condensed. So some chick's just ripping ass to respond to me. Huh. That's kind of sexy. I'm not going to lie. She's just sitting there fucking in these tiny ass black pants like... <laughs> Like, uh, you might have stained your Asperger's there. So, wow. Like, this hot-ass goth chick just farts for me on camera. See, I have to wonder if there's a troll paying her to do all this. Because I'm finding it seriously hard to believe that this goth chick is this obsessed with me. She claims to be taken. But every time I make a fucking video responding to her shit, she makes one right back. I don't know watch the gothic d video and pretend like i'm jacking off to it but i'm not really gonna do it just to be a smart ass <laughs> it's a troll video my man yeah i know it is i know it is i'm not stupid one thing kerber loves doing is creating quote unquote food hacks and cooking videos this is probably one of the weirder things kerber does and by that I don't mean weird in comparison to normal people, well kind of as you'll see, but I mean that it's weird for Cobra to do as cooking is a very tame thing. And yet they've been going on essentially since he started making videos with his first one coming out in 2012. With there being so many of these cooking videos I cannot really talk about this too much as there is too much to actually discuss as most of his videos are actually pretty good with them mostly consisting of Doritos and excess of cheese and grease. One of the videos I want to bring up is the video of Kerbs making a steak for Warlord. However, this would not be the most normal steak as he would decide to add some gravy to it. Although for some reason, he put a lot of flour into the mixture he was making for the gravy and somehow managed to create a bread-like substance. Well, let's see some of that crunch action. Now we're gonna take these chips, we're gonna combine the two Doritos and the ruffles, I'm gonna drop the piece, get that picked up. Then we're gonna add our flour and we're gonna dunk it in the milk first, then the egg, then the flour, 
dunk it back in the milk again, and then fry it up, suckas. Yes. So we're gonna do it just like this. So we're gonna take and move the flour to the side for just a second. It goes milk, egg, then flour, then milk again, and then we fry it. Like so. chicken that and my beef I'm gonna coat the beef into the fryer do one more okay let's get this and we'll clean it up ah grease why it's grease and lightning look at that that's beautiful YouTube Look at it! Oh my goodness! Yes! Glorious chicken fried steak! Sorry, I got a little excited there. Whew, okay. Let's we'll start dressing the steak with our bacon. Now it's gonna get microwaved, anyways, so it don't matter. Four pieces for that piece. So it's potato -y. Oh yeah, that's done. Beautiful. Now we got plenty of uh, grease here to do a little bit of gravy with. So, I'm going to turn that down to a lower heat. A nice medium to medium temperature, like medium low. And we're going to add our milk very slowly because we don't want it to spill over. There's our milk. Wash that out. So we're going to take our spatula and we're just going to stir it around. Now the gravy might be a little bit thick because I added, there's already a lot of flour in here, but that's alright. A thick gravy won't hurt. I can always reuse this gravy for other things to cook with. A little bit of this from the other one. Oops. Making a mess. Who cares? It's chicken fried steak. For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake, YouTube. Okay. These aren't the only creations that have been conjured up by our dark wizard, with him being quite a creative. Well, he attempts to, I suppose. Probably the most successful pose is at something creative is drink combos, which isn't exactly the hardest thing to do although these mainly consist of mixing something alcoholic with Mountain Dew or Monster Energy. However, like I said, not all of these are amazing, as shown by this recent drink combo he decided to make. It's uh, your boy King Cobra JFS, and I promised the fans I'd do a drink combo using this beautiful hand-blown glass that one of the fans made. I should be very careful with it. 
This should be one of my most prized possessions. There we go. Oh, God damn it, YouTube. All over my lap. Oh, yeah. I got my dick wet. You see that right there on camera? Oh, jeez. Yo, that is fucking delicious. Hold up, my trolls can kiss my ass burgers. Oh, fuck. God damn it, nasty fucks. Oh, fuck, that's disgusting. Oh. So we got our base. Let's break in this glass gently. You don't want to tilt it just like when you're pouring beer so the carbonation kind of... Gentle. Let that carbonation die down. We're gonna want that carbonation to die down just a little bit. I'm gonna pour, make it full and drink a little bit of it here. <laughs> Farting on camera and drinking pink champagne. What is this nonsense? This, my friends, is King Cobra JFS. And what the fuck is eating ass? Like, I don't understand that, dog. So we got the pink champagne. Got a splash of that Fago firework. Whoop, whoop. Now with the carbonation from the soda pop and the champagne, it's probably gonna curdle with these last four, but that's what YouTube wants to see. Oh, that's so gross. Wants to see, right? Ah, jeez. Oh, that's some gnarly shit looking YouTube. This is nuts. So I'll pour a splash of that in there. Oh, dude, this drink combo is looking so fucking gnarly, dude. Why? Oh, I'm gonna drink the whole fucking cup on camera and give you a fucking review of it. Because that's why you subscribe to my channel. That's why Cobra has 50,000 subscribers. We're we'll gonna add our, uh, okay, the kinky aloha is not creamy, so we can add a little bit of that right there. Oh, yeah, that is some wicked shite, bros. Dude, would you fuck with this drink combo, YouTube? Because this is looking insanely gross and weird, like. Mmm. And the kinky aloha is really good. It's not uh, creamy like like the other two were, but it's not bad. It's got a really great taste to it. This is just ridiculous because I mean, really, YouTube. You know, we were this. It was gonna come to this. I have never in my fucking life seen a goddamn shooter that looks like a sperm cell. This is ridiculous, YouTube. Okay, this looks like some straight up nasty net net. This looks too realistic, dude. No, no. Blech. Fucking goddamn it! That tastes good, but it it just doesn't look right. You know, that's just no. <sighs> Yeah, man, I got this uh, hot jerky stick right here. It's a classic hunter's sausage. Well, that's a good jerky stick. Sausage, whatever. Well, there it is, sitting right there, just below the surface there. Get an angle on this just right. Ah, he's actually drinking it. What the fuck? Oh my god. The thing that takes up the most of his creative time is his music, with him having with him now having more 
with him now having numerous albums at this point, which surprisingly aren't very good. Some of these actually go on to some quite heavy topics, with him making a song about his father Clint, about how he isn't an innocent boy anymore, as well as his mother Laura and how he hates her. However, what is mainly known about Cobra's musical creations is him playing the guitar, which he is god awful at and requires skipping unless you are a masochist. This is excluding the Star Spangled Banner, which he fails to play every time, which completely pisses him off. Anyway, I've skipped over a lot, and I'm going to continue doing that, but I will briefly talk about his days working in Wendy's. Although don't worry, although don't worry, he wasn't working with the food in the back, he instead worked in the lobby. As you may be able to tell from the countless things I've told you about now, Cobra wasn't the best at his job, infamously switching the T's, which is a very big hazard, you know, in case someone is diabetic. Cobes would also tend to be late a lot of the time, something that would happen in one of the most iconic Cobra videos made to date, the hair dye video. Hey YouTube, um, this is uh, King Cobra Jeff, that's another video. Um, uh, I got paid Wednesday and I started to work at 11.30 today, so I called for a ride and got my check cashed early, which is really nice, you know, and all that. Oh, it turns out to work till 5 tonight, so... Hold that thought. Hello? Uh, what were you saying? No, I was shopping. Oh, Jesus Christ. I. Oh, my. I'm already at the apartment. Son of a bitch. Wow. Well, I feel like an idiot. Oh, crap. Alright. Damn it. Alright. Alright, that works. I'm so sorry I missed those to the dates. Alright, bye bye. Fuck. Well, I feel like an idiot. Um, I missed the days, and it's Thursday, not Friday. I was supposed to come in at 1130 to um, 7, but they said I can come in at 4, so. Yeah, buzz off. Major mistake. I thought it was Friday, not Thursday. Fuck. <laughs> but thankfully enough, Wendy's is very patient, very understanding, so they said I can come back and work at four. So I can't eat this little thing. Just put it in your hand. Work around. And just start working into your hair. Now you should use over a kitchen sink or a towel because it's very messy. But I'll take my chances. So a lot cheaper and a lot better for your hair than doing it in the salon, I can guarantee you that. Well, if you could totally have to get in the shower and get completely naked, I can just rinse my hair out underneath the shower head, so. Again, this does sound good right now, but I gotta go to work in a couple hours, so that's not gonna happen until I get off work. Let's say that before I get off work. Oh yeah, I got it all over my fucking head. Yeah, it's a chick product, but you know what? Fuck it, I don't care. Yeah, the back of my neck is soaking this shit. Oh, that's lovely. That's just freaking lovely. Yeah, I'm just making an ass of myself now. For you, YouTube entertainment, no less. God damn it. This is why you want to put a towel on before you do this shit, people. This is the back of my hair. And you can take time to do your eyebrows too if you want. Do my mustache too. Ah, uh, yeah. Why so serious? The skin's all blue from the black air dye. Oh, look, the blue skin clashes so horribly with my tainted teeth. Oh, how fucking lovely. How fucking lovely. Of course, it wasn't much of a mustache there to begin with, but yeah. 
Oh, well, at least gives you a good laugh and helps you appreciate life a little bit more. Like I said, it could be worse. Ho oh, ho, I'm Josh, the French Avatar. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, sacre bleu. <laughs> I'm Pierre the Avatar. <laughs> really annoying orange, really, Josh? Really? <laughs> hey, Apple, hey, Apple, what? Knife. <laughs> You look like a retard, Josh. I know I do. Nah, SpongeBob would talk about milk. Nah, my name's Larry. I'm special. Nah. I look so fucking stupid right now. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Oh man. <laughs> oh, I look horrible. However, despite all of this, Cobra wasn't actually fired due to incompetence, although he did have his hours drastically lowered. How Cobra was actually fired was due to troll interference, although this would not be the end of his working career with him having other jobs. Although this would come to an end when he would decide to work on his wand making full time. This is something I haven't really brought up yet, but Cobra likes making wands and staffs which are imbued with magic as Cobra is a wizard slash warlock. This power has come through with making people get into car crashes, destroying Isis, conjuring thunderstorms, and most importantly, changing traffic lights to green. Got a light that needs to be turned on. Pull up my magic wand here, YouTube. And there's a light right there. It looks dark now, but we're gonna see it turn on. I got my wand trained on that son of a bitch. You wanna see some real magic? Watch this shit. Abracadabra, motherfucker. Watch what happens when I get really close to it, YouTube. It gets brighter as I point my wand at it. How the fuck does he do that? <laughs> now it's getting really bright, and my wand's like super close to it. Look at that shit, YouTube. You wouldn't have believed it if I would have told you. But look how bright that shit's getting as I point my wand at it. And that's kind of cool, YouTube. These ones were at first produced in a really stupid way, literally using twigs which he would find and bring back to his apartment where he would proceed to spray paint them unventilated of course, and selling those on his Cobra Craft Wands Etsy page. However, this wand crafting business has really slowed down now, especially due to the lathe that he received somewhat recently, which has just been a disaster as it takes a little bit of the charm away that the original ones had. Cobra's content would also go on a variety of different platforms, going from YouTube to Facebook Lives and then back to YouTube to stream. The content would not really differ, as you know it's Cobes, but he would finally become, as he would say, monetarized, which would help Cobes with his money problems, as you know, he didn't have a job to pursue his wand crafting business. However, Josh had been told that he was going to hit it big, with somebody called Chaz coming into the Cobraverse stating that he was casting him for an adult swim show. This would make Cobra become absolutely insufferable and would become one of the darkest periods in the Cobraverse. The saga didn't actually last for too long, although it felt like an eternity, but one day we were all rid of Chaz, although something else Cobra had been rid of was the monetarization of his channel, and thus it appeared as though Cobes' finances were in jeopardy. Thankfully for the trolls, not Cobes, someone would step in which would breathe a new life into the Cobraverse and creating most likely my favourite saga in the whole of the Cobraverse. This man would be homeboy Robbie, who was ultimately a short term figure in the Cobraverse, although like I said, would be very important. This man wasn't a Casperite like all of Cobra's other homeboys, this man was an online tar wrangler. God knows how he managed it. Anyway, Robbie convinced Josh to soothe these demonetarization issues 
through using Streamlabs, which would allow people to donate money to Josh as well as send an audible message to both Josh and the stream. Obviously, when you're someone like Cobra, these messages aren't exactly the nicest, but they are hilarious, although Josh didn't exactly think so, soon dubbing them Donate to Talk Shits. Did you make out with Scotty at his funeral? First of all, he didn't die, and second of all, no I did not. You're disgusting. Thank you for the $5 donation, troll. <laughs> uh, the whole Scotty joke is so overplayed, dude. My trolls have serious issues, man. I feel sorry for them. I really do. Thank the gothic gods for bite-sized cobra vids. I disagree, but thank you for the $5 donation. How many times have you used the hard RN word, Kobe's? Oh, the word retard? I use it all the time because I'm socially retarded. I have Asperger's, uh, which is a form of autism. Josh is a chomo. Josh is a chomo. Josh is a chomo. Mute. You are so full of shit, dude. No, I am not. Fuck those sick fucks. And the person who donated that, that's not the real you-know-who. That's just someone pretending to be her. Disgusting trolls. Where can I buy one of those wooden dildos you're making? <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh my god. First of all, dick lick, they're wooden wands. I don't know where you got the idea that they were made for that. Second of all, you get them on Etsy, you prick. Thanks for your money. I am so disappointed in you, son. I wish I never traded in my car. <laughs> Holy crap, pretending to be my dad. Ah, oh, mute. Yeah, if you're gonna spam, you know, if you're gonna fucking spam it, you won't be able to hear it when I'm recording it, at least. <laughs> Losers. A couple of years. Josh, what do you say about the videos of you smoking pot that got leaked? You know that's illegal, right? And now there's word that you're creeping on underage girls? Are you a criminal? First of all, fuck chomos. Second of all, fuck entrapment. Third of all, I have Asperger's. Fourth of all, enough said. Josh, the trolls leaked your internet history and pictures to the subreddit. I am disgusted and will not be watching your videos anymore. That's not what's up. Yeah, I highly fucking doubt that. You're so full of shit. Thank you for your donate to talk sh Josh, stop talking to kids, you creepy weirdo chomo. All you do now ah! is to We gotta donate to talk shits. We gotta fresh donate to talk shits. Stop trolling an autistic and trying to trap him, you sick fucks. That's illegal. <laughs> What's Warlord's shite pipe taste like, Chomo? I don't know, you tell me, sh troll to talk shits. This is honestly depressing, Kobe's get your life together, dude. <laughs> you don't have to drink every single night and day eat a fruit or a vegetable form. Donate if you to think talk these streams are good content, oh then you God, deserve dude. to get charged back. Get a grip, homie. Yeah, donate to talk sh Yeah. I will get a grip as soon as your mom tr quits trying to give me pussy. Look, here's the thing of it. I got a grip on life, and the trolls are going to be talking extra shit. My bungo misses the warm penetration of your fungoid member, Kobe's. Well, that's a fantasy, man, because that never happened. Ha! Don't need to talk shit. Yes! Don't need to talk shit! Oh my god, yes. Hey Cobra, you are badass goth wizard. All the haters can get ducked. They just wish they could hold their liquor as good as you do. Can you sing a Rammstein cover? <coughs> I might just do that. You are under investigation, Kobe's. I am sorry to be the end, I have to tell you. You know You the let real this great DT. nation down yeah. and we will never forget. You know what? I know the donate to talk shit. Oh yes, I know the donate to talk shit. <laughs>
Sadly, this little saga didn't last too long, as Streamlabs allows people to charge back their donations. But it wouldn't do this immediately, and as Cobra had no self-restraint, this made Cobra struggle to pay back the chargebacks. So this, as well as the fact that we're just making fun of him, ended the DTTS saga. 2020 was a very big year for the Cobraverse, with the Chaz and the DTTS sagas both occurring in this year. However, what would be the biggest thing to happen would happen not long before Cobra's favourite holiday, Halloween. Codes would be doing a regular fan mail stream when a call from home dad Clint would interrupt, and we'd get the big news that Josh was being evicted from his apartment. We are live on YouTube and we got some fan mail! <laughs> it's a bottle opener featuring a female's ass. That's uh, an of age female's ass. That's uh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Got herself like, looks like a captain's hat of some sort. I wonder if it'll fit. <sighs> and of course it won't fit. <sighs> God damn it. Yeah, that sucks balls, dude. God damn it. Uh, doing a fan mail unboxing on YouTube. Alright, sounds good. Alright, later, Scott. Alright, hold up, my dad. Hey, hey what's up? Hey. hey, what's up? What's up? Say, what's up? What? Why? Oh my god. Am I... I don't want to be a... No, like, I can quit smoking indoors. Fucking God, dude! Where the fuck am I supposed to go, dude? So this is the thanks I get for giving them an ashtray out of my own fucking pocket. I bought an ashtray for fucking outside. This is the fucking things I get. Real fucking nice. That was 40. There's no way I cost $6,000 worth of damage to this apartment. That is bullshit. Fantastic. Fan. What? I didn't do it intentionally. Shit. I'm getting evicted for using spray paint on my wands. Seriously? <sighs> okay, I'm listening. I'm not turning this on anyone. I'm just asking questions, man.
That's okay, you know what? I I'm sorry too, Dad. No, I don't, Dad. Okay? No, I don't need counseling. I just, I just need to make smarter decisions. Dad, thanks for letting me know. I said thanks for letting me know, Dad. I said, Dad, thank you for letting me know. I said thank you for letting me know. I said thank you for letting me know about the situation. Cobra had caused thousands of dollars of damage to not only his apartment, but the apartment surrounding him, which required both Josh and Clint, although mostly Clint, to fix up the apartment as best they could, including the carpet, which Josh would later go on to sell. Although sadly, not the cum stained carpets, which is not actually a joke for shock value, but is something that actually happened. And yes, Clint would have had to pick these parts up. In response to this, Cobra wasn't punished at all, and nor did he learn any lesson. Instead, Clint just found a new apartment for Josh to move into, which he'd likely helps finance. This would be the sad end of the original apartment, which, at least in my opinion, I truly loved, although what more can you do than buying a $40 ashtray? Towards the end of 2021, we got the Ms. Green saga, which wasn't actually a saga with a woman, no, it was instead a praying mantis which just managed to stumble into Josh's apartment. This sadly would be a death sentence for the poor insect, as Cobes would murder it, blowing smoke onto it, and then pouring alcohol onto it. Ms. Green did not last longer than a single day in Cobra's lair. However, Cobra would manage to cause a curse upon him as he tried to stick the insect corpse on a stick, I mean staff, where he would then proceed to list it on his store for $666. By the way, a stick with a dead insect on that likely wouldn't survive postage. Soon after this, Cobra's Etsy and Teespring pages would be taken down, although his Etsy was only taken down temporarily. This all seems to have accumulated in a stream where he would appear drunk although this is normal by now, however it would be very very far from normal, well kinda, as Cobes would have his biggest meltdown so far on stream. So I'm doing a social media rant, it's a rant on the bullying on social media. I've had several trolls t text me to kill myself and I'm like fuck suicide. And the sad part is no one gives a shit if you act unless you actually do it, then they give a fuck. And it's 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 sad, YouTube. It's fucking sad. No, fuck off. Fuck off with that. Hi. Fuck off with that, you fucking wanker. Fucking uh, for the Patriot Guard to use admissions and shows. He leaves behind a wife and a brood of kids, stepkids, and grandkids. Fucking loser. You can't play the fucking Star Sprinkle banner right now. It's pissing me off. It pisses me off. Fuck the haters. And that's how.
doing fucking liner. Fuck you! Stupid fucking liner. Hey, liner. Fuck you. Oh, you don't like being beat up? You don't like it? You don't like it? You don't fucking like it? Then maybe you should fucking go against the grain. Stupid. Fuck. Beat you up, you piece of shit. God damn it! Broke my fucking cigarette! Fuck! Fucking social media doesn't give a shit! It's the fucking truth! Dude, social media doesn't give a shit. They're just like, oh, hey, you know. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fucking touching me, you piece of shit. Fuck you! And fuck this. Yeah, of course, my drink has to spill. I lose my fucking temper over these stupid fucking assholes. And no one's going to feel sorry for me because it's just like you did it to yourself, dude. You had a fucking drink combo, and you had to lose your fucking autistic temper and spill it for yourself. Fucking bullshit! Fuck out of my way, you stupid fucking hat! Stupid fucking fucking piece of shit! Fucking hat! Fuck you! Fuck you! You stupid fucking bottle! Stay on the fucking desk! Stay on the fucking desk, you piece of shit! Fuck you! I told you. How many fucking times did I fucking tell you to stay on the fucking desk? Fucking stay on the desk! I told you a thousand times. Fuck you! Fuck you! Stay the fuck in my hand, you piece of shit! I'll smoke you until you're dead! Fuck you! This again didn't phase Cobes, but only a month later, things continued to go bad as Warlord and Josh would have a fight yet again on stream, causing a large rift in their platonic relationship. Wild sight! Fuck off, loser! I came from Mad Green, you piece of shit! Go home, you're drunk! You're getting sued tomorrow. Yo, okay. Josh. Fucking do it, you pussy! Yo, yo. Fucker, I will fuck you, dude. Josh. Don't, oh, do, it. Josh. Fuck no, don't do it, Josh. Go home. You're fucked up. Yeah, you're fucked up. Go no, home. You're fucked up. Fuck you, dude. Go home. You've been fucked up since they've been deceived. Yeah, I know I have. Go home. Fuck you. Fuck you. Go home. I'll go home.
Okay. Okay. Right. Do my sponsor. No, yeah, go ahead. Go home. Nice. Hey, Josh. Uh, His lawyer will be here in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fuck you, dickbag. Fuck you, Alex. Are you, are you going home to your bridge, Alex? Yeah, no shit. Fuck that fucking retarded fag. Ooh. I'm over his yeah. shit. Josh, I'm yo, telling me nice to him. And he's starting fights with my fucking neighbors. I'm over it. The most recent thing that I need to bring up is the recent arrest of Cobes that happened near Christmas 2022 where home dad Clint called the police on Cobes after he was supposedly making threats against himself and others. When the police gave Cobes an option of going to the hospital to stay for the night or going to jail, Cobes decided to go to jail as he was quote, too smart for therapy. Other than this, Cobes has been very monotonous as the majority of the time Cobes is sitting there drinking. However, when I was originally thinking of this part, I was going to talk quite a lot about how boring he is despite the decade of content, but that's not exactly true. Kind of. Cobra produces so much content, and yes, most of it is fucking dull, but with Cobes producing so much, we have managed to get so much good content despite this reputation of being so boring. Sadly, I can't show all of this content due to just how much there is, otherwise this video would end up being like 5 hours long and it would take away from a lot of the magic that emanates from our lovable gothic wizard. Because of this, I really suggest you go out and watch some of the clip channels, most notably Bite Size and Boglum Chronicles, although there are many many others that are worth watching, as well as some that do longer form videos on him which go much more in detail on him than this video can ever dream of doing. Pretty much, if you're a loser like me, just binge Cobra content. It's pretty good. Sometimes. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. It's been a pretty long one, so good job for sticking through it. In the description below is my Twitter, where you can talk to me if you want, I guess, as well as my second channel, where there are stream archives of my awful streams, which are now mainly codes related, so I guess it lines up well. Once again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.